The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is the agency that regulates big pharmaceutical companies. And it's funded by those same big pharmaceutical companies. Can you see any potential problems in the FDA being funded by the big pharma companies that it's regulating? The FDA used to be funded entirely by taxpayers, meaning it was sort of a public funded body. And I'm sure there was some room for corruption or whatever, but ultimately the FDA sort of was housed within governmental authority. Now it is increasingly funded by the institutions and corporations that it regulates. What kind of problems could you imagine that might lead to? The FDA has moved from an entirely taxpayer funded entity, a one increasingly funded by user fees paid by manufacturers that are being regulated. User fees, this is our fee for using you. Today, close to 45% of its budget comes from these user fees that companies pay when they apply for approval of a medical device or drug. Isn't it mental? Like when people say this, oh, there's no way we can improve our systems of government. Yes, you can, here's a few things. Don't have the FDA funded by the people it's regulating. Ban lobbying right now, immediately. Oh, shit, all right, that would definitely be better. That would, uh, yeah, when we say it couldn't be improved, we mean we'd prefer you didn't improve it because it's perfectly good for us the way it is now because we can all make loads of money from it, even if it causes tremendous, unimaginable suffering for ordinary people. That is, in fact, irrelevant. Oh, aren't those ordinary people meant to be who the government represents? Yeah, that is what it's meant to be, but it ain't that, so shut up. Changes in more recent years have also increased the number of standard new drug applications approved the first time round by the FDA from 38% in 2005 to 61% in 2018. What could have changed? In diseases where there are not many medication options for patients, 89% of new drug applications were approved the first time round. So it seems that there is an impact when the FDA is funded by the people that make the product that it is meant to be assessing and regulating just based on, you know, data. Most recently, the COVID-19 pandemic has seen the FDA provide emergency use authorization for potential treatments in a matter of weeks, not months. The infrastructure and capacity to review the available information so rapidly is due in large part to the funding from user fees. While the number and speed of drug approvals have been increasing over time, so have the number of drugs that end up having serious safety issues coming to light after FDA approval. Wow. That's amazing. So there's a consequence to that. When you approve things quickly because of economic reasons, profit-driven reasons, down the line, there are problems. Of course there are. Of course, if the, like the free market capitalism has done wonderful things. Brilliant things have been achieved. We didn't know enough then. The same way as in science continually. Do you remember when they used to put those mercury fillings in their mouths? Oh, we're not going to do that no more. It's poisoning your blood. But at the time, it was like, oh, this is the best we got. So we're not condemning science for being at a precipice of understanding. We are condemning it for not responding to the knowledge that they have currently. If you know that having a set of pharmaceutical companies regulated by an agency that they fund leads to bad drugs being released, change it, stop it, stop it immediately. And if you don't do that, don't claim that what you have is a system that's for ordinary people. Just just declare outright on the news, behind a podium, flag waving in the background, we're doing this shit for corporations. It's ain't about you. Shut up. Shut your mouth. We're not interested. Stop the pretense. It's irritating to watch. In one assessment, investigators looked at the number of newly approved medications that were subsequently removed from the market or had to include a new black box warning over 16 years from the year of approval. These black box warnings are the highest level of safety alert that the FDA can employ, warning users that very serious adverse events could occur. 21% of medications were removed or had a new black box warning. 21%? That's terrible. If 21% of our videos were just lies, I was like, I'll stick a black box on them. <laughs> That's not good enough, is it? Some potential reasons that more adverse effects are coming to light after the drug approval include senior FDA officials overturning scientists' recommendations. We'd like to overturn that. Oh, we recommend you don't do it. Overturned. And a lower burden of proof for medication approval. Yeah, I've got some medication here. Can you prove it works? Oh, it's too much of a burden proving stuff. A Yale-led study showed that nearly one out of every three drugs approved by the FDA have a new safety issue detected in the years after approval. Have you not noticed people in the public space now talking about science? Hey, it's science. Trust science. Trust the scientists. 
These are the scientists. I'm not anti-science. Look at all this glory. Well, not necessarily this t-shirt. <laughs> this was made by a scientist in a t-shirt shop. I mean, the camera, the laptops, all the stuff. I love it. I love the gadgetry. It's fantastic. It's wonderful we can communicate. It's wonderful that my mother didn't die of cancer. Them eight times she had cancer because of the National Health Service in the UK and because of brilliant medications, presumably. But what ought be addressed is that the profit incentive has become so powerful, it's evidently corrupting based on this evidence. The FDA is increasingly green lighting expensive drugs despite dangerous or little known side effects and inconclusive evidence that they curb or cure diseases. As patients or their insurers shell out tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars for unproven drugs, manufacturers reap a windfall. For them, expedited approval can mean not only sped up sales, but also if the drug is intended to treat a rare disease or serve a neglected population, FDA incentives worth hundreds of millions of dollars. That's mental. The system's not working correctly then. Instead of a regulator and a regulated industry, we now have a partnership, said Dr. Michael Carome, director of the Health Research Group for Nonprofit Advocacy Organization Public Citizen. That relationship is with the agency away from public health perspective to an industry friendly perspective. Public health is not about public health, it's about being friendly to the industries. Don't those little words tell you the truth? Don't they tell you everything you need to know? It's not about public health, it's about being friendly to the industry. Public health should be a priority in public health. The FDA also increasingly allows drug makers to claim success in trials based on proxy measurements instead of clinical outcomes like survival rates or cures which take more time to evaluate. In return for accelerated approval, drug companies commit to researching how well their drugs work after going to the market, but these post-marketing studies can take 10 years or longer to complete, leaving patients and doctors with lingering questions about safety and benefit. Of course, what they say is, well, we need to get these drugs out there now. These people are sick now. We've got to help them now. Would well, you want your mum or your kid to wait 10 years while we don't make enough pro I mean, while we prove that the drug is effective. But when you know that what's at the beating heart of these systems is mendacious greed and malfeasance, then it's very difficult to try trust them. The FDA's growing emphasis on speed has come at the urging of both patient advocacy groups and industry. I wonder who funds them patient advocacy groups. Don't look into that too hard. Which began in 92 to contribute to the salaries of the agency's drug reviewers in exchange for time limits on reviews. In 2017, Pharma paid 75% or $905 million to the agency's scientific review budgets for branded and generic drugs compared to 27% in 1993. Industry also sways the FDA through a less direct financial route. Many of the physicians, caregivers and other witnesses before FDA advisory panels that evaluate drugs receive consulting fees, expense payments or other remunerations from pharma companies. This is what I've been telling you for a while. Science is a subset of capitalism. So it behaves in accordance with the principles of capitalism, maximum profit. So it's not like science is bad or whatever, science is neutral. But if it exists as a subset of a fundamentalist ideology, and I know you think, oh, capitalism, what would you put a couple of... No, I'm not saying communism. There's millions of alternatives. There's thousands of different ways to do things. What I mean by capitalism is profit at all costs, late capitalism, advanced capitalism, rampant mutant capitalism that we're living within now. I'm not criticising the right of people to come up with an invention and sell it. I'm talking about a, a warped, corrupt system that fell apart in 2008. It's been kept alive like Frankenstein ever since then and is still churning out bogus products and living in a kind of phantom dream space. It, it's not surviving according to the principles that it espouses. It's kept alive artificially and it's not even properly competitive. These drugs don't work, they're failing, they're hiding the truth, they're paying people off. That's not science, that's capitalism, that's corruption, it's cronyism. Think of a word that you like for it. What might be called pay later conflicts of interest have gone largely unnoticed and entirely unpleased. In examining compensation records from drug companies to physicians who advised the FDA, the journal Science, found widespread after-the-fact payments or research support to panel members. Among the investigation's key findings over nearly a four-year period of 107 physician advisors who voted on the committees, science examined, 40 received more than 10,000 in post hoc earnings or research support from the makers of drugs that the panels voted to approve. 26 of those gained more than $100,000 and six more than a million. So they're sort of closing down potential avenues for the truth getting out by paying off every single person, shutting down proper review, research and understanding. It's a sort of totalitarian dome of deception. The FDA says its rules along with federal laws stop employees from improperly cashing in on their government service. But Science, that journal, found that employees at the agencies 
often reap later rewards, jobs or consulting work from the makers of the drugs. It's like they'll go to any lengths, isn't it? Oh, you can't pay them while they do. Yeah, but what about if down the line, oh, you know, I suppose you could do it. They'll do anything. What's the focus meant to be? The focus is meant to be, can we effectively treat diseases? Whole thing's gone out the window. In 2016, a study found that 15 of the 26 employees who left the agency later worked or consulted for the biopharmaceutical industry. Of the more than $24 million in personal payments or research support from industry to the 16 top earning advisors, 93% came from the makers of drugs, those advisors previously reviewed. So there you are, 93%. That's basically all of it. That's basically all of it. So they've got it sewn up from every potential angle. You're not dealing with the truth. I wonder what other areas that kind of mentality is at play at. Other areas where you're told to just trust the science, trust the data, not question it. Look at how they operate. You know that these companies and organisations are not trustworthy. Here is the information from a journal, ironically called Science. Presumably they're not like, oh, at Science we all sit around with crystals and just reading about like Illuminati conspiracies and that. They're scientists, aren't they? They're science reviewers. That's their peers. These are the findings of their peers. This is proper science. Analysis of data and conclusions reached reasonably from that data. Well, imagine if the people that were doing this were sort of getting paid by, oh, no, can we, you know, could you say it's 5%? Could you say it's... Then this wouldn't even be out there, would it? Congress has authorised one initiative after another to expedite drug approvals. In 1988, it created fast-track regulations. In 92, accelerated approval and priority review. In 2012, Congress added the designation breakthrough therapy, enabling the FDA to waive normal procedures for drugs that showed substantial improvements over available treatments. You would need to be a, some sort of mad Pinocchio-style optimist to sort of to go oh yeah this is all cool this is all trustworthy nothing to see here we would take a level of gullibility of credulity difficult to imagine these agencies being funded by the corporations that they're meant to be assessing and regulating is a farce if you want a better world demand that that stops demand that lobbying stops it's not impossible to change the world it's just the people that benefit from it staying the same tell you that change is impossible. That's all that's happening. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, turn on the notification bell if that's your thing. You can subscribe to my podcast on Luminary as well. You can get that off of Apple. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at this saucy little fella. And if you uh, want to learn to meditate now to get some mental space from the chaos of this world, have a look at this on my side channel, Awakening, which I'd also ask you to subscribe to. Sign up to my mailing list at russellbrand.com so I can get direct contact with you. Thank you. Mm-hmm.